What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video where I'm actually going to go over the last couple of things that are going to be done to the Corvette in the time that I own it. Now this car has been awesome the whole time that I've owned it. I've done a lot of work to it and I've learned quite a bit. The last couple of things I'm going to do in the next two videos are go over replacing the headlight lenses. It is a very common C6 issue. The headlight lenses actually get crazed and what you're seeing here are brand new headlight lenses from RL Sebring who's an active member on the Corvette forums. Check them out at c6c7.com and you can get a set of these that are a complete kit. So first things first, let's go over some advertising. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's get the car out of this garage, pull it in the shop, and start taking the headlights out. All right, so I got both of the headlight assemblies out. It was definitely a pain, so I really didn't feel much about it. I do it at your own peril. You can remove the front bumper cover or you can do it without fully removing it like I did. Um, I got the headlight assemblies out and the next thing I'm gonna have to do now that I have the uh, fender gaskets all removed is actually bring these inside and I'm gonna have to bake them and peel the lenses off. So I'll bring this stuff inside, fire up the oven and I'll see you guys in the house. Okay, so a quick update on the headlight deal. If you're like me, I was a little bit nervous to do it, and I've done this one time before, just working on a F-Bodies lenses to do the Whistler mod on it. The biggest pieces I was able to peel off after making sure this adhesive, or that polyurethane sealant was really, really warm, are these three here. Otherwise, it's coming apart in little chips and flakes and stuff, so it seems to be a fine line kind of between heating it up and kind of you know being able to handle it or whatever so i've been putting it in maybe five ten minutes at a time as needed just to keep everything warm and it's actually coming apart pretty good so once i'm at this point and get all the glue out i'll be able to clean it up and then i'm gonna start the reassembly process and do the other headlight Okay, so this one's all disassembled and cleaned up. All the glue is out of the channel, which is one thing that's super important. Whether you use the supplied Mirimoto butyl tape that you actually lay in the channel, heat up, and you actually seal the new lens and this black plastic uh, trim piece together, you can do it that way, or you can use your own polyurethane sealant, but it'll take a couple days to dry. Uh, you can do it either way. All right, so a quick update. I did go to the hardware store and I got this external E4 Torx. Came in a little set like this. RLC bring in the instructions recommends using an E4 Torx bit on the bolts right here. You'll notice that there's three of them and there's three nine millimeter nuts that actually fasten this black housing 
to this outer lens uh, through the black plastic trim piece here. And I'll flip this one over and kind of show you how it works. These little studs actually mount in here, and what's going to happen is that there's some sort of thread locker, just a little dab of it on each one, and it'll back these studs right out, and in turn, these little flat pieces will push against this black housing. So when you actually take it apart, you know, so I noticed that three of these things were loose, so it's a real pain to hang onto these with pliers, so I can't recommend just getting the right tool for the job. It's just one more example of it, and I should have done it the first time, but luckily none of these broke or anything like that but that's why you should get one, just get the right tool. This actually went pretty easy once I got the right socket to actually hang on to these. But I've got this heat mech up to 350. I'm gonna throw this back in for 20 minutes and hopefully the lens will pop right off. And I kinda got the technique down for actually peeling all the adhesive out, so I bet you this side will go a lot quicker. Only other thing to note is that if you get a screwdriver that's the exact right size for the channel here, it's gonna go pretty easy. This is barely smaller. Anything bigger, you just get wedged up in the plastic. And luckily, I happen to have just the right size, otherwise you could always fashion one with a grinder. You could sacrifice one to fit in here, just perfect. But um, that wasn't necessary here. So I pretty much have this one all disassembled, ready for cleaning and then reassembly with the new lenses. This one's not too far behind it, so hopefully I'll be wrapped up here sometime tonight. Okay, so off camera I actually did that one, but what I am gonna do is show you exactly how I use this Morimoto butyl tape that's provided with RL Sebring's new kit. Uh, you'd seen the instructions on his website, uh, I think it's c6c7.com, that you use the same type of urethane sealant that's in here. Downside is that can take a couple days to dry. Now, RL uh, emailed him a little bit back and forth, uh, the gentleman about these headlight replacement lenses from, and he recommended actually using this. He said it's a lot better. And after doing the first headlight, I can see that overall it's pretty easy to work with. All you really want to do, according to the manufacturer's website, is just really fill in the channel so it's full and pretty much flush with the top because it should, you know, the new lens should really sit down in there. I put it in my oven at 175 for 10 minutes, which was his recommendation. Uh, not actually Morimoto's, they actually said another 100 degrees for like 10 minutes, so somewhere in the middle is probably perfect. Now, I opted for the side of caution this time. Now, this time I might put it in for like 190 or 200 for 10 minutes, just so it's a little bit softer. and It'll give me a little bit more time to work with it, because it is a little bit of a bouncing act. I'm trying to line up the three studs down here, get all these tabs lined in and put some clamps on it. The biggest benefit of using this butyl tape is that in about 30 minutes, as soon as this is back to room temp, it's cured and ready to go. So you could actually put this in tonight if you wanted to. Now, I'll show you how this spreads out. I'll show you a little section. Basically what you're gonna wanna do is go all the way around and have one seam, and that's pretty much it. It's straightforward. I'll get the oven preheated again, and we'll be able to throw this one in pretty quick, unclamp that one, and finish up the lens replacement. I did find that the more the merrier, so don't stretch it out so much that it's not going to fit, just so that it fits loosely in there. You basically want a perfect fit, so even if you got to leave it a little bit thicker than the channel to fit it in there, it's going to be pretty good. So without boring you to death, I'm going to go all the way around the channel here, leaving a bead just like that. I'll make sure it's sitting in there fairly snug and secure so when it gets hot it doesn't like fall out or anything weird, but that's the idea. So. I'm gonna basically just follow the channel all the way around, meet the seam and work it together really good, and should be good to go.
there you have it. We've got a couple of brand new sealed up C6 Corvette headlights. Now, I did notice in this one, there's a little piece of lint way up here. There's a little one on the lens here. So it is recommended that you don't touch the inside of the lens at all. Uh, maybe you could dab lightly with like a microfiber towel or something. But if I understand right, there's no UV coating inside. It is only outside. So it's actually like a raw plastic. It's going to scratch extremely easily. At least that's kind of what I read about it. I use a little bit more of that butyl sealant all the way around the perimeter here, and it seems to have done a little bit better job uh, maybe sealing, whereas on the other one you didn't quite get anything pushing out, but it is sealed all the way around. Now, I would have been happier knowing what I know now, but this is the first time I've done it, so I'm giving myself a little bit of slack on this one. But so far, I'm super happy, especially when you look at what it was like before. I mean, <laughs> check it out. This one was pretty bad, but um, that is like a brand new headlight housing. So if you're going to upgrade to like the Miramoto C7 style headlights, I believe they're like $1,300 or $1,400. This kit's like 400 bucks, and it comes with everything you need to rebuild it, including new gaskets that surround it. So the last thing that's actually left on this that I'm going to do tonight is put on the gasket that goes around. They're twice as thick as the factory ones, so they're going to make a better seal on your fenders and front bumper cover. And it's pretty simple, straightforward. Just be careful and take your time so you don't tear it. It's kind of a soft material. So I'll throw that on real quick and that's gonna wrap up tonight's part of the video. So they turned out better than I could have ever thought. And honestly, if you're guilty of being a little bit of a perfectionist with stuff like me, it's gonna be very easy to overthink doing this process. But if you do a little bit of homework and take your time, all you need is some very basic hand tools. And what you're gonna end up with are brand new looking headlight lenses, which in turn are gonna make your headlights look brand new. So if you liked today's video, give it a big thumbs up. If you want to come back for more, hit the subscribe button. We've got one more video coming on the Corvette here. Stay tuned for it, and we'll see you guys in the next one.